to many women who spend the best years of their lives waiting for a mink coat, the idea of deliberately cutting them up must seem like sacrilege. But that's precisely what they do at one of the industry's very few firms of fur matchers in Bishopsgate, London. For this is where every type of fur has to be collected and stored, perhaps for hundreds of years, in case they're needed for some tricky repair job. It is, in fact, a fur museum. Matching is not as simple as you might think, because each fur has its own characteristic according to country of origin, size, texture, variety of dyes, and fading due to differing climatic conditions. Not that this baron's coronation rope has had much chance to be affected by exposure to things like sun and salt air. Incidentally, though, the repair just goes to show how little respect the moths of today have for society. Not all the matching done here is for repairs. Occasionally, a garment has to be made a little larger. Never, of course, because the owner has got fatter, always because the fur has mysteriously shrunk. No marks for guessing what this is. What every well-dressed swimmer wears, a mink bikini. The knowledge required for this aspect of the industry is often passed down from father to son. Michael Herman, for example, representing the third generation of his family. For there are no textbooks on the subject. Basic qualifications are a keen eye, endless patience, and of course the experience that comes with handling such a tremendous variety of furs. Many thousands of miles are travelled every year in search of unusual furs, which may not be needed for years, although eventually there'll be some use for them. Illustrated by the ability to repair today, articles like this Huzar's hat, which are often up to 150 years old. Besides their routine work, the matchers have a collection of unusual articles who's ever seen a fur sparring. Just one of the fascinating aspects of a museum that few people know even exists.